morning guys wednesday morning and it's yeah mornings are getting darker but we left off we just got the bulkhead in that's done got the struts in but i'm going to leave it at that for now because i've still got some work to do in the garage and i've also got the wall units to build up here don't want to put the slats or anything more in there it's only going to hamper the work that i need to do this morning's task is i want to keep moving now now we've started on the furniture board i want to keep moving along the van here the next job is the shower area what i'm going to be doing as i explained previously is do a timber frame on the right hand side because we need a cavity okay so the cavity is what's going to have the water pipes come through if i just do two panels then pipes are coming through the back and they're going to be exposed so we're just going to use some two by one battens to create a frame that will allow me to get the pipes in but it's also going to allow me to put some cable through it for the other side where i plan on putting a 12 volt socket so if someone wanted to add a tv or something later then they've got that option well further ado let's get this frame built and we can then use the frame to calculate where the next wall will be on the left hand side i can get that built which will then allow me to do the bench seat then i can do electrics because at the moment i'm just using the power bank fire a cigarette lighter that's been wired into the feed the supply and the lights so this time of day without those lights i'd be buggered let's do this okay so it's now starting to come on i've got my outer frame i'm just going to do another middle strut couple of noggins get one up across the roof this is just a test of piece to make sure i was the right distance away from the bulkhead and i even remember to put a trim be here because that's going to ride up the entire outer edge that's going to be on the two corners but i've made my first big mistake with the shower tray we were going to go 700 wide by 800 deep which comes to around here but see if you can see the problem oops yeah skylight skylight is as far forward as it could go without it going into the next panel but it was a different profile on the ribs of the roof which i couldn't find a flange for so that's why it's but here i thought it was a bit nice it was a bit more central to the living space here i'm only just coming into it by about an inch but an inch is an inch isn't it and obviously initially i had measured for a 120 bed now it's 135 so that's brought that forward and then i haven't thought about that afterwards when i was looking at shower trays for down here i was looking at 700 by 700 so that's what i'm gonna do i'm gonna revert back to a 700 by 700 shower that's actually going to increase the bench length by 100 mil it's not a bad thing i'd have just liked to have it been a bit bigger but i've marked it out and i've sort of gone in that space and it, it is ample it's it's fine girl we all make mistakes right gonna finish this off gonna run some pipes i've run another cable now because i'm gonna put the switch for the shower on the inside of the wall but here just can't believe i overlooked that shower tray is annoying but like i said it's gonna make for a bigger bench and the space was still ample but you can see now sort of the dimensions of where it's gonna be so that's now gonna run to about here and then we'll have a bench seat there and then i'm gonna actually use this space here we're gonna make just a little box section and we'll make it out of the furniture board and that's where i'll put the light switch for the wall units the switch for the water pump and some usb sockets so it'll come in handy anyway let's get this done guys okay so that's the frame built i'm going to be putting a 12 mil ply sheet on the inside and then i'll put the furniture board on the outside this side then as i said earlier will just be a single skin furniture board and we are on describing now i have done a video before on the crafter all about scribing and it's straightforward but i guess it's straightforward when you know how this is how i do it so i've taken a five mil piece of ply because just an off cut it's nice and cheap i don't care if i cut it i've just tacked a little batten to it because i want to keep it nice and straight i've cut it to height and that's run into the floor so what i need to do now is top and bottom is to square it to this line here once i've done that i'm then going to use this tool now this is just a trend easy scribe scribing tool i think it might be in my amazon shop if it's not i'll check it on there for you guys and you haven't necessarily even got to use this there's lots of ways to basically do what this does you can use a compass you can use a bit of wood you can use two pencils there's lots of ways to do it but if you want something that's just quick and easy because this is very easily adjustable you just spin the wheel 
he says and it starts opening what you do when you're scribing is you need to go to your biggest part now that section is way too big a minute even for this tool so what i'm gonna do is i'm just gonna do a rough cut up here i'll draw a line and make sure i keep it smaller than the gap here just to get this in a bit closer and then we'll be able to use this tool so my gap there comes to my pencil here all right so i know the cut is going to be roughly around there so what i'm going to do is come in just about an inch and we're just going to trim that just so that i can get that in a little bit closer and then we can use the scribing tool okay i've cut that out so we're a bit closer but the gap is still too big we're going to do it again but the most important thing to remember when you're doing this guys is to keep your bottom square and flat on the floor because ultimately that's going to be your square edge that you're going to work off then to get your curve so i'm going to just take a bit more off this to get this in a bit closer and then we should be able to do the final scribe and that's the end panel in and this is the space then instantly becomes storage what i'll do now is i'll put a level line across the front cut the carpet out ready it's just easier to carpet the whole roof in one go i've got the cable here for a light that's a bit long to be honest i wasted some cable but there and then the scribe happy with that not too bad next job now that's in rush that bit a little bit and sort of rather than finish off those bits which i'll come back to later is because i want to get the bench seat in so i'm going to do a little bulkhead here put the bench seat in purely because it's going to allow me to put the electrics board in and we've got solar on the roof that's currently being wasted so i can get the solar cables hooked up get the lithium in here and start letting this fan power itself so that's this afternoon's job and then because we're now 100 mil short we're not going with the 800 wide and you can see why that's 700 and we're just clearing it so there's about 20 mil there so now we've got this exposed what i'm gonna do is i wanted to put some usb points i wanted to put a light switch for the wall cabinets up here what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna do a nice little box section down here down to the seat and we'll do that out of the furniture board and we'll have some nice usb points we'll put the water pump switch on there and that'll be sweet right a quick break from this fan if you guys have come over from the ruck channel you'll recognize what i'm about to show you if you're new to vanology then you won't have seen this before as i squeeze past but i'm going to show you a camper van that i converted with my mate paul <laughs> and it's one we done back in the summer now i did some of it paul did some of it and some of it we did together so this is a two berth sprinter long wheelbase i built the shower and then he's gone with a shower curtain which works for them quite nice it's a nice flexible rail shower on a rail and this is the mira micro or no the mira compact shower looks really neat and clean i think so i might nick that one and then this is the vans so paul as you may have noticed is six and a half foot tall so he can't go width ways and obviously if they did a full bed length ways for him the bed comes to about here so they're going to lose half the van paul did all the bed area himself and this bit here pulls out and slides along the sliders there and then the cushions from these two bench seats actually make up the bottom quarter of sort of the mattress done some nice wall cabinets i built the cabinets paul did the doors and all the catches i built both sides of the kitchen also did the worktops did the undermount sink for him they deliberately wanted overhang on the sink because they want to put a chopping board there and you got your oven hob and mr paul and then yeah we got some drawers two massive drawers and then Paul's put like a thumb turn in yeah, to keep them locked in. Them. And then another cupboard down here and another cupboard down here. So yeah, it's turned out really, really nice. It's done the TNG on the walls, wallpapered the rear. Because they sleep lengthways, they've got a window either side. And these are actually the windows that I really like, that I stole the idea for and I've put them on the boxer. Nice little van and they've spent the last sort of two months traveling all over the uk in it you enjoying it paul beautiful best thing ever did 
and he's come over from a motorhome to the dark side. Two year old boat, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> right, back to the boxer. A rather productive day. We've got the frame up on the right side. We've got the left panel up. And then we've also got the electric board in. I fitted the Bluetooth module for the MPPT charger. And there is an app so you can go on and see what you got coming in. I've got a little bit coming in, but to be fair, it's almost sunset. Not a lot. Also then, that's coupled with 105 amp hour Fogstar lithium battery. And again, you got an app for that. So you can go on there, you can have a look, see how much is going out how much is coming in and it's just a nice easy wireless way of monitoring your battery so this doesn't need a shunt i've done all the 12 volts all i've got left to add to this are the ones that are going to go up here surprising how long the electrics actually take but it's in and I, I like to get it in nice and early so that i can test it all you know tomorrow now during the day i can test it all see what solar's really coming in making sure everything's working properly check all the connections make sure they're all good battery's a little bit low but that's fine you can just trickle up now as i said earlier i've been using this power bank to power the lights in here but that's only a little battery and these lights are cane in it so it only lasts about two days and i've got to recharge it but i've currently got them on on the lithium and the switches are all working beautifully i've had a good clean in here now this was as you can imagine an absolute mess so all my electrical stuff is by there but yeah that's had a good clean and the next thing i've got to clean is this mess now to be fair i've got everything put together so i've got like all the boxes all the plastics and styrenes but there's just a load of dust loads of off cuts of wood down here that's the fridge off cuts off cuts off cuts everywhere so i think i'm going to spend the last half hour try and get on top of this a little bit oh and i tell you show you something else that did arrive today like planning ahead i thought right it's going to get a little bit cold in here in the winter i know what it was like in the unit last year when i was building the crafter so i've got this neat little suitcase diesel heater so you've got hot hot air out there that'll be for my exhaust there's loads of space in here you can see there's the actual diesel eater and then around the back i've got the controls a remote control for it that's going to be fuel in probably air intake and the power supply so over the next week or two i'm going to try and get that fitted get that testing and that will keep us nice and cozy in here for the winter I was just surprised how neat and tidy that was. I gotta clean this mess up and that's a lot better. Can't stand mess. Like to be able to get around freely, but when you get caught up with work, sometimes yeah, piles up a little bit, so keep on top of it. I'm done, it's half six tonight. Gonna go have a shower, maybe a beer, and I'll catch you in the morning. Good morning, so it's Thursday today. This video is actually due out later on this evening. Today's plan. First thing I've got to do today is run the B2B cable. The battery for the cab is under this panel here. So I'm hoping there's a way I can come under the floor and around to here, get into the back of the electrics board and then they need to come out down in this corner the DC to DC, I've had notification that's been shipped. That's coming either today or tomorrow, so we'll be able to get that final bit finalised. And then the only thing I've got to do left with the electrics is the points I mentioned yesterday that I'm going to put by you, and one of those will be the wall lights up there. So I want to get that done. I then want to carpet this section because the next job is I'm going to build a bit of a bench bulkhead, so it's like a side section by here. Then I can do the front and then I can box that in. So that's today's plan. If I get all that done and we've still got plenty of time left, then I think I'm gonna finish the inside panel on the shower and then inside here I can run then, get my cables and the hot and cold water pipes for the shower. I've also sent Charles out this morning to go look for some flooring. Her specification was I wanted some hard sort of wearing flooring or rubber flooring for the garage and then I want like a LVT for in the main area. Right, let's get this B2B cable run. How hard can it be? 
Right, I've taken the seat out, I've taken all the caps off to get this, and then I've also, to lift this up, I had to take some of the trims off. Now, thankfully, there's actually a nice little trunk route that the positive can go into, and we're fused here at the battery as well as over there on the board. That side's done, or halfway done, so I think I'm going to have to take the driver's seat out to look at that section out so we can do the positive as well, and I'm hoping that run goes right across because that'll take me right to the electric board. Right, that's the cables in. That was quite a bit of a faff, because to get the driver's seat out, I had to take the three bolts out holding in the handbrake just there on the side. And thankfully, there was a track that goes all along there. It's all in like a conduit section. And then when I've brought it out just up here, I've put it into the corrugated conduit, and we'll run that now behind you. And something else just arrived. So I only ordered this three weeks ago and it's just ironic that I'm here working on it and the DC to DC is finally here. So I'm putting in a 20 amp DC to DC charger, but some of you may have noticed I've put in a particularly big cable, bigger than I needed to. So I could have put a 16 mil cable in and I've actually put in a 35. So there's quite a few things on this fan. I've upscaled in case someone wants to upgrade things later so like if someone wants to up the dc to dc then the cable's already in place to do that the same with the two skylights i put a bigger cable in in case you want to put a max fan in um i've put extra length on the cables to the battery in case you want to double or triple up the batteries so little things like that just much easier to make it upgradable because if you were to change that cable afterwards it would be a nightmare once a van's built next job now is put all this back together i got a bit of tidying more tidying to do on the cabling get all the trims back on get the seat back on and then we'll fit this dc to dc i've run an ignition live cable as well that's following the same route and that's coming to just i don't know if you can see it in this light but it's just down to the fuses on the right but i need a piggyback it's, i've got the the big ones but that's the micro fuses so i need to get a piggyback one and apparently one of them is an ignition live so we'll get that connected up later on solar's been cranking into the battery all day so that's doing well system's working brilliant okay so that was a long few hours to be honest but I've now got both seats back in. Engine is running. It's not run for nearly three weeks. I thought, right, good time to test the engine, but also I can test the DC to DC charger. That's all cabled in. I've got my pos and neg going off to the bus bars. That's an ignition life cable, and this is my incoming. This is a 20 amp DC to DC charger. Now I know I was getting two amps from solar. Yeah, I still am. So you can see coming in currently 22.6 batteries at 13.5 volts and 41%. I'm going to let the engine run for about 10 15 minutes because it just that needs a turnover anyway and it also allows me to test out this DC to DC. But right now the battery's being charged by the engine and the solar. So tomorrow we're going to do the electric hookup hookup cable because I know it's a dry day all day tomorrow and I didn't want to risk it today because it was showers on and off. Put this battery into position and strap that down. I've given this all a good test and I'm happy that's all working beautifully and as it should. Workshop is still clean and tidy after today's work. Right, I'm going to come in the workshop. It's a bit noisy out there with the engine running. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. I can see there's a lot of you guys watching. Not subscribed. Go and hit the subscribe button and I'll keep these videos coming for you.